welcome to the Brock Interview Series with host Thomas S. Orwatt Jr. Welcome to episode number 52 of the Brock Interview Series. I'm Thomas Orwatt Jr. It is June 13th, 2022. And for this feature, I have Tommy DiCarlo, vocalist of the legendary rock band Boston, as my guest. The story of Tommy DiCarlo's journey to becoming lead singer of Boston is truly fascinating. In 2007, shortly after the tragic death of longtime Boston vocalist Brad Delp, Tommy DiCarlo was discovered by Boston guitarist, songwriter, band leader Tom Schultz. Since then, Tommy DiCarlo has performed 326 shows with Boston and sing vocals on four tracks on Boston's latest studio release, Life, Love, and Hope. In addition, Tommy has a solo band called the Carlo, and in December 2021, released a tell-all audiobook called Unlikely Rockstar, The Tommy DeCarlo Story. Tommy DeCarlo is currently on tour and will be performing classic Boston songs with his incredible band. What follows is an exclusive interview with Tommy DeCarlo. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Rock Interview Series, and today we have a great special guest. We have Tommy DiCarlo of Boston with us today. Uh, Tommy is going to be in right between Buffalo and Rochester in Batavia, New York, on this Friday at the Batavia Downs. Tommy, how are you doing today? Thomas, I'm good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Well, let's let's start off about this great concert you're going to have on uh, Friday. A lot of people are really been looking forward to this. It's, it was announced, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, and there's been a lot of excitement. People are looking to get back outside, see some great concerts. I mean, I can't think of a better night out than uh, listening to Boston songs uh, for 90 minutes. Yeah, you know, the music of Boston and, of course, our opening act, The Music of Journey, is uh, it's a win-win right there. You know, those are timeless hits that people never get tired of. And um, we never get tired of performing them. So it's uh, we're as excited as the fans are, believe me. Yeah. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, band that you have backing you for this uh, for your tour that you're currently on? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> of course, this isn't a Boston show or a Boston tour, but we are covering the music of Boston. And we have a great band. We have uh, August Zadra is on uh, lead guitar and vocals. August is with uh, the Dennis DeYoung Band, as is um, Mike Morales, our drummer. Mike is also with uh, the Dennis DeYoung Band. And um, we have um, Walter Eno on keyboards and guitar. And Walter is uh, from the band Survivor. So there's, uh, there's another great uh, you know, addition. And um, I have my son, Tommy Jr. on uh, rhythm guitar and um, the, uh, the lovely and very talented uh, Peyton Rose will be on bass guitar and vocals. And uh, just uh, uh, actually, uh, her name is actually Peyton Belligan, but her middle name is Rose. And uh, I tend to call her Peyton Rose, but uh, yeah, we have a great group of musicians behind us and we're, uh, we're super thankful for that, yeah. Yeah, anyone who's skeptical about going to the show can just uh, check out um, YouTube and see some uh, clips from some of your previous live performances. And I think they're gonna be pretty much convinced that you know this is the show to see. Um, my question to you is how close did your set list resemble that of an uh, actual uh, Boston set list? Well, you know, we, uh, we do cover quite a few of the Boston hits and um, as far as uh, the exact set in, um, you know, in comparison to a Boston concert, uh, it probably varies a little bit here and there, but um, either way, you're going to, you're going to hear the hits and you are going to be, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised with, with how many of those hits we actually cover. Yeah. Um, how many other uh, dates do you have this summer besides the one in Batavia? You know, Thomas, I got to tell you, I probably have to look on the calendar myself to give you an exact number, but I think we have quite a few. We're, we're going to be busy right up to fall. So we're, uh, you know, given, given the COVID issues that were going on and we're kind of at the tail end of that, um, needless to say, we're certainly very um, um, happy and excited to be going back out and performing, you know, live music again. And I think uh, the fans are ready to hear it. And uh Again, that that makes for um, 
you know, just a wonderful combination. You know, you got people who are dying to get out and, pl and listen to live music. And there's plenty of bands that are looking to get back out and, and perform. So uh, I think it's going to be a busy summer all the way around for live, for live entertainment. That's for sure. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned uh, COVID before, and how can we not mention that? Um, you were pretty active, though, uh, during that period. Um, you put out a solo record, uh, DiCarlo. Uh, you also put out an audio book, The Unlikely Rockstar, the Tommy Carlo story. It had a very unique step into rock and roll where you were actually working a normal job like most of us. You're working at Home Depot. And um, well, why don't you take it from there? What happens? So you're working at Home Depot, and all of a sudden you're in the lead singer of Boston. How does that happen? Yeah, well, uh, of course, that came after the unfortunate suicide of, of uh, Boston original lead singer Brad Delt. And, um, you know, I hated to get an opportunity on the heels of something that sad and tragic, but um, that's basically where the opportunity came about. But um, I really have to go back and, um, you know, and thank Tom Scholes for, for that opportunity because uh, he gave a virtual unknown an opportunity to be a part of my favorite rock and roll band. And uh, um, <clears throat> I don't think I could ever even put into words how thankful I am to Tom for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just working a normal job. And after I heard about that unfortunate uh, situation with Brad Delph, uh, my daughter helped me post a couple of uh, Boston cover songs that I recorded my vocals to. And we put them up on a MySpace page. I had a MySpace page at the time. And um, that uh, is where I first introduced my, my vocal abilities to the Boston fans. And um, I was really as surprised as anyone else to get some really positive feedback on those songs. It was uh, two of them. I, I believe it was uh, Smokin' and Don't Look Back is what I recorded. And uh, Somehow they made their way over to Tom Scholes and uh, Tom uh, gave him a listen. He liked what he heard. And the next thing I know, I got a, a phone call from the band's publicist. And um, she was uh, just as, as kind and sweet as could be. And, and she sent me uh, an email and asked me to call her. And I did. And the next thing I know, Thomas, I'm on a, I'm on a plane with my family flying up to Boston to perform with the band Boston at a uh, at a tribute show that was uh boston was going to be a part of um to celebrate the life of brad Dell. and that was back in 2000 uh, uh that was back in 2007 and uh here uh gosh you know here we are in 2022 and um i'm really still enjoying that ride and riding that wave so um once again i i i, I I honestly couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity that Tom gave me because that opportunity has led to so many other opportunities, including the opportunity to come to Batavia and rock out with the fans in, uh, in upstate New York. Yeah, we're like I said, we're very excited about that. Now, you've played 326 shows with Boston. Um, tell me about that first show in August of 2007, that trivia show. What was it like for you before you like hit the stage with Boston to play that show? Yeah, it was uh, really surreal because just um, a few uh, a few years before, I was in the audience at a Boston concert watching the band. Um, so um, I definitely had better seats <laughs> this time around, but uh, it was it was uh, very intimidating. Um, I didn't really know uh, what to expect or how to, to act other than just sing the songs that I've always sang since I was a kid. But it's de it was definitely a little different doing it in front of a live audience. And believe it or not, I don't know if you know this or not, but Boston is the first band that I ever performed with. Um, so that night in Boston back in 2007 was the first time that I had ever taken the stage with a live band. And uh, I'm thankful that it worked out good. I had some nerves. If I go back and listen to that actual recording, I was a little nervous and you could hear it in my voice. But uh, thankfully, Tom heard something in my voice that he thought he could work with. And, um, and he kind of you know stuck with me and, and gave me an opportunity the following summer to go out on tour with the band. And that was my first in 2008. And uh, I, I want to say by the end of the tour, I was probably a better singer and performer by the end of that tour than I was at the beginning because at times I was clueless on what to do on stage. I just, I didn't know what to do because I'd never been there before, but 
it certainly was a lot of fun and uh, and, a, and an experience that I'll never forget. When did you start really getting comfortable on stage playing with Boston? <laughs> I don't think I've gotten comfortable yet, <laughs> but um, I think, uh, you know, after that first tour, we, we had uh, Tom took a few years off to work on the Life, Love and Hope album. And that gave me some time to get myself in shape, not only physically, but vocally, I was able to get myself in better shape. And really with every show and every, well, with every tour after that and every show, I just, you know, you, you try to build confidence in, in the performance you had and you want to be the best you can be. And um, it took a little while though. I mean, even till this day, if, if I went out, if Boston toured again and we went out on tour, I'd probably be just as nervous, but talking to musicians over the years that I have met, it's, it's, they're all, you know, it's nothing new, you know, no matter how many shows you do, you still get a little nervous. And, uh, but the comfort is the music and um, uh, just knowing the music and knowing that the fans love the music is, uh, is definitely a, a help. But I don't know if I'll ever really truly get comfortable doing it. I have fun doing it. And after I hit a couple of high notes, then it gets fun because I'm, I have more confidence to hit the next high note. So it's kind of like a domino effect. If, you know, if I if I do good early on in the show, it only builds, and by the end of the show, I'm I'm feeling great and having a good time. And uh, over the years, it it has worked the opposite, where I've started out pretty rough, and then it kind of got a little bit rougher. But you know, I am human. Uh, you know, most singers are just uh, you know they're they're doing the best they can to sing the songs that uh, you know they're out there to to perform and. It isn't easy, but um, it is a lot of fun. And I would probably say 90 to 95 percent of the time, I'm pretty much on key and on point. So I'm thankful to be blessed with that gift and to be able to go out and perform, uh, you know, in front of a live audience. I think that's 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 been a blessing and it's been something that I never expected would happen in my lifetime. So um, just, uh, you know, again, just a wonderful blessing to be able to do that. You're part of a, a record, the Boston's last studio record, uh, Life, Love, and Hope, that was released in 2013. You recorded the vocals on uh, four of the tracks there. What was it like recording with Boston, and what was it like working with Tom in the studio? Well, having the opportunity to tour with the band was one thing, but being able to uh, get an invite to go up to Tom's studio and record on, uh, on a Boston album was uh, just a, a huge bonus. I never expected anything like that. And um, it was uh, actually Tom made it incredibly easy. He's uh, super easy to work with and uh, incredibly patient. And um, but he brings out the best in you at the same time, because you know, you, you don't go up there to, you know, horse around, you're up there to do a job. And I came prepared and, um, uh, you know, uh, we, I, it, there was a few trips involved and, and, you know, by the time the record was done and uh, my work on the album uh, took, uh, you know, three, four uh, visits up to Boston, trips up to Boston, but um, it was great. I, I had a great time. And um, again, Tom made it really easy and the music was great. So, you know, as soon as you hear it, you want to sing it. And that's one of the great things about the music of Boston and the songs that Tom has written over the years. You know, uh, you know, when, when you hear those songs, you, you automatically want to move and get excited. And for me, it's, it, you know, I'm able to um, release that excitement through, through singing the songs. And, um, and the reaction that we get from the fans is just uh, equally as... Uh, gratifying because they're just as excited to hear the music as as we are to perform it but uh again uh, thomas to go back to your question of uh, singing on the album was 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 a huge bonus and uh i had a great time and i'm, I'm again i'm so thankful to have the opportunity to, to do that yeah um i have next question is a two-parter here um number one are the, do you know if there's any plans for boston to tour again or record again and uh number two is do you Will you rec um, include any of the, uh, the one, any of those four songs that you rec that you did the vocals with on that record on your live set? Um, I do not know of any plans of a Boston tour. Um, that would be a better question suited for Tom Scholes himself. And if you can get him on the phone, I'd be pretty impressed. Oh. But um, 
Uh, I hope so. I hope that we get to go out again, you know, if Tom decides to take the band back out and do another tour. Uh, certainly I'd be excited. I know the other band members would, and of course the fans would be thrilled. So, you know, time will tell. And uh, I guess the best way to uh, to look for updates would be to go to bandboston.com and check, check for updates. Um, as far as the music of Life, Love, and Hope in our set list, no, not yet. But uh, there are a couple that we'd love to cover. And, um, you know, we're gaining a little momentum here. And um, hopefully uh, we'll have, uh, you know, more opportunity to, um, you know, uh, to perform more of the Boston hits. But um, again, believe it or not, we cover quite a few of them. And uh, for, for me personally, I don't think there's a song on the record that isn't a hit on, on any of the records that Tom's written. So um, in my opinion, we're playing, you know, every song is a hit. And, um, and again, very well, re uh, we get a great reception from the fans, uh, from the songs that we do. Um, what was the uh, fan response to you as vocalist? Did, did you feel that they welcomed you right away? Or did you feel like you really had to prove yourself to get their um, approval? Yeah, you know, uh, it was kind of a double, kind of a double-edged sword there. Not only did I feel like I had to gain approval from the fans but it meant something to me to be accepted by the band and you know they were always very supportive but something about taking the stage with the band members of your favorite rock and roll band you know you want to do your best not only for the fans but you want to you want to be your best for your bandmates and uh so um, I think over the years, I have gained some respect from them. And, and given the fact that they've had me back for a number of tours, tells me that they like what they hear. And, and that means a lot to me. But as for a musician, uh, you know, I'm, I'm equally as thankful for them to be able to pull off this music live. I mean, Boston music is no joke to try to do that live. That's, you know, not just the singing, but performing. Um, you know, Tom has written some incredible music that is uh you know very intricate and um it takes it takes a lot to pull that off live so um my hat's off to the band boston for being able to do that and when i listen to the songs when i'm singing them on stage in my ears it's as if i'm listening to the album and uh that's how good the band boston is live um the music of boston i think we're we're we're, we're awful close to that but like anything else, there's, you know, what the old saying, there's nothing like the real thing. And, uh, and, and I certainly love to perform with both bands, but uh, touring the music of Boston, when you got a Tom Scholz on stage and Gary Peel and, uh, you know, be it Curly Smith or Jeff Neal and Tracy Ferry or Beth Cohen, all of our bandmates, they're just amazing. And, uh, and um, I would love to be able to go back out with the band boss and hopefully we will do it again someday. But yeah. uh, the music is fantastic. And, and, and uh, the fans, some fans have been a little bit tough. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't sit around and read, uh, you know, post online, but every now and again, someone will bring something to my attention. They'll say, Oh, did you read this? Or did you read that? And, you know, for the most part, I want to say that they're all very positive and supportive. But like anything else, you know, they miss their favorite singer and Brad Delp, and I do too. You know, and um, it's hard to replace uh, an iconic vocalist like that. But I'm not trying to replace Brad. I'm just trying to be the best singer I can be when I'm up there performing and uh, performing the music of Boston and. Um, you know, I do the best I can. Again, for the most part, I think um, the fans have been very receptive and they are, uh, in my opinion, the best fans in the world, Boston fans are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I saw you uh, play uh, in the Buffalo area. Uh, you played at the Erie County Fair and uh, I was very impressed. And, I, you know, for someone that has never been in the band before to come into a band like Boston, and then replace probably like one of the best lead singers in rock history, one of the most challenging voices to try to cover. Man, that's quite an accomplishment. Well, you know, one of the things that I am um, most proud of when performing the music of Boston is there are a lot of um, 
lot of bands have replacement singers, such as I am a replacement singer. And, um, but a lot of those bands from that era, they're, they're playing those songs, some of them a half step to a full step down in key. Boston doesn't do that, which means I don't do that. And I'm very proud at 57 years old to be able to sing the music of Boston in the original key. And to me, that's where it sounds best. So uh, I'm, um, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to do that. Uh, and, you know, speaking of that at 57, I started with Boston, I was 42. And I honestly think I'm a better singer at 57 than I was at 42. So I'm, you know, I work hard at it and it means a lot to me to do it right and to be the best I can be. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, that uh, will continue. Yeah. All right, Tommy. Well, I, I thank you very much for your time. I'm really looking forward to Friday's show. Um, any last uh, any last things you want to say to your uh, your fans watching today? Well, <clears throat> especially for the, the uh, upstate New York fans, it's always nice to come back home. As most of you know, I grew up in uh, Utica, New York. And um, I am uh, proud to say that I... Uh, I'm a North Utican at heart, and um, I believe I'm going to have some uh, some of my uh, John F. Kennedy High School classmates at our upstate New York shows, and that's a homecoming in and of itself, so it's very nice to be coming back home, but uh, we look forward to, to, to being there and, and performing, and uh, I hope that uh, as many of you come out to the show as possible, and uh, you're definitely going to get a double dose of, of journey hits and Boston hits. And um, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. I know we are. Yes. And uh, where can uh, fans buy the Unlikely Rockstar? They can go to uh, two places. Uh, they can either get it on Amazon or they can go to uh, Audible. And again, uh, it's uh, Unlikely Rockstar, the Tommy DiCarlo story. And that story will take you from childhood all the way up to the very first time I took to the stage with the band Boston. And uh, You'll see, uh, or you'll hear anyway, there were a lot of twists and turns and a lot of unexpected things in life that popped up that, uh, that got me to that point in life. And um, it was fun to share that with the fans because as a fan myself, if one of my favorite rock stars came out with a book, I'd probably want to listen to it to see what their life was like. So, um, you know, although it seems like, you know, uh, you did, you know, rock, <clears throat> rock stars just get an opportunity to be rock stars and they didn't have another life, but, you know, they all have and I have too. And I think uh, I covered a lot of that in uh, Unlikely Rock Star. So if, you, uh, if you're interested in hearing that, um, again, you could give it a listen uh, and that's over at Amazon or on Audible. Okay, sounds good. All right, Tommy, I'll see you on Friday night. You take it easy, all right? Thanks, Thomas. I appreciate your time. We'll see you soon. Okay. So it's a lot. Bye-bye.